Question 3 from Section 2 of the 2022 Higher Physics SQA exam. A student sets up an experiment to investigate the interaction between two trolleys on a smooth, horizontal track. The mass of trolley X is 0.5 kilograms and the mass of trolley Y is 0.25 kilograms. So we're given the masses of both trolleys. The trolleys X and Y are moving together to the right at 0.4 metres per second, as shown in that second diagram there. When the trolleys are between the light gates, a plunger in trolley X is activated and the plunger extends and pushes trolley Y with an average force of 6.25 newtons for a short time. So the in between the trolleys is a plunger and it's hit by a small hammer and this plunger extends to, swing, to, to uh, uh, springs and it pushes the trolleys apart. Now trolley Y now moves to the right at 1.8 metres per second. And the effects of friction are to be ignored. That's what negligible means. So we've got a lot of information here and we have to think what we're going to be doing in the question. The question asks us, calculate the magnitude, that's the size, of the change of momentum of trolley Y when the plunger is activated. Now, since we've got such a complicated situation and a lot of reading to do, it's always better to draw in a diagram of what exactly has taken place. And that's the situation here we've got. So we've got a before and after. So this is the before situation. And this is the after situation. So you can see the two trolleys are going together at 0.4 meters per second before. When the plunger is struck after the dotted line, you can see that one of the trolleys, the trolley Y, is moving with a speed of 1.8 meters per second to the right. And it's got a mass of 0.25 kilograms. Now the question asks us is to calculate the magnitude, that means the size of the change of momentum of trolley Y when the plunger is activated. So we're all interested in trolley Y here. So we're going to just look simply at Y and we can work out the momentum of it. Momentum before is going to be mass times its velocity. The mass of the trolley is 0 0.25 kilograms. And we know that it's Speed is going to be 0 0.4 meters per second, which translates as a velocity 0 0.4 meters per second to the right. So 0 0.40 meters per second. So to do that, my calculator, we end up with an answer of 0 0.1 kilogram meters per second for the momentum before the trolley is actually, uh, before the plunger is activated. So that's the momentum of trolley Y. After the collision, the momentum of trolley Y can be found as well. It's moving to the right, so we have a uh, positive velocity. Remember, momentum is a vector. So we have mass, doesn't change, 0 0.25 kilograms. And we'll multiply it by its new speed of 1.80 meters per second. So that's its new speed. And that gives us a momentum of 0 0.45 kilograms meter per second. So that's the momentum of trolley Y after the collision. Now, to find the change of momentum, we put down this character here, delta P, that's the change of momentum. And all that, all that really means is the momentum after the collision take away the momentum before the collision. That's all that means then. So we can figure it out from our diagram here that after the collision, trolley Y was going to have momentum of 0 0.45 kilogram meters per second. And we have to take away the momentum before, which is 0 0.1 kilogram meters per second and therefore what we have now is that we know the change of momentum is going to be 0 0.35 kilograms meters per second 0 0.35 kilogram meter per second so that's the change of momentum of that trolley it's a plus change and we all we were only asked to find the magnitude of it which means the size of it so we stick with 0 0.35 kilogram meter per second now, the second part of that question is the following. It says, calculate the time during which the plunger exerts a force on trolley Y. Now, we know the change of momentum, delta P. We've just worked it out. That's going to be 0 0.35 kilogram meters per second. And we were told that the force acting on the trolley was 6.25 newtons. 6 2.5 newtons and we're asked to find in this question the uh, the duration of the time which the tro which the plunger uh, was pushing the trolley so that's what we're trying to find here now the minute you see that you realize that's an impulse 
uh, problem. And we know that the change in momentum, delta P, is actually equal to the impulse. You'll not get a change in momentum without an impulse, and you'll not get an impulse without a change of momentum, or a change of momentum gives an impulse. Both go hand in hand. So the change of momentum is actually equal to the impulse, which is Ft. Now, we know that we can change the units of uh, the change of momentum to the units of impulse. So therefore, we have this equation here now. We have Ft is going to equal to 0 0.35 and the units will change to give you newton seconds. So we know that the force which caused this, the average force was 6.25, so it's going to be 6.25 newtons, multiplied by the time, that's going to equal to 0.35 newton seconds. So for t, if we divide both sides by 6.25 newtons, we get 0 0.35 newton seconds divided by 6.25 uh, and it's going to be newtons. The two newtons cancel out, and if you do this in your calculator, time t becomes equal to 0 0.056 seconds. So the time of contact the plunger made with the trolleys is 0 0.056 seconds. Question 3, part b. Calculate the velocity of trolley x immediately after the trolleys separate. Now, what do we know so far? We know that the momentum of trolley Y before the collision was going to give you a value of 0 0.1. So trolley Y had a momentum of 0 0.5 kilogram meters per second before the collision. And after the collision, it had a momentum of 0 0.45 kilogram meter per second. And we know that the momentum gained by trolley Y was equal to 0 0.35 kilogram meters per second. Now, the trolley Y, if it gains momentum, means that trolley X must lose momentum. You think about it, momentum must be conserved. So whatever trolley gains momentum, the other trolley is going to lose momentum. So if we work out the momentum of trolley X before the collision, we know it's going to lose the same amount of uh, momentum as trolley Y gained. So the momentum of trolley X before the collision, we can work that out, uh, trolley X is going to have a momentum of the following. So P is going to go to MV, which is going to be equal to 0 0.50 kilograms, and times the speed it's going at, which is 0 0.40, because it's all locked together. And if we work that for momentum out, we get an answer of 0 0.2 kilogram meter per second, 0 0.2 kilogram meters per second. So that's the momentum of trolley y trolley x in this case now if trolley y gains 0 0.35 units of momentum then it falls for the conservation momentum trolley x must lose 0 0.35 kilogram meters per second of momentum so the momentum of trolley x after the collision must be equal to 0 0.2 and it must be equal to 0 0.2 take away 0 0.35 so the momentum of trolley x after the collision is going to equal to 0 0.2 and it's going to lose 0 0.35 units of momentum so we do that on our calculator we get a value of uh, minus 0 points uh, 0.15 so trolley y Trolley X, sorry, has got a momentum of 0 0.15 kilogram meters per second. And we know that momentum equals mass times the velocity, so therefore what we have down here is that the mass times velocity of the trolley, trolley X, has got to equal to minus 0 0.15. Therefore, we know the mass is going to be 0 0.50. So 0 0.50 V equals minus 0 0.15. And we can solve for V v is equal to minus 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.50 and that's going to give us a velocity which if we do minus 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.5 we get 0 0.3 minus 0 0.30 uh, meters per second and notice that's a negative answer which means trolley y must go back that way and that maths 
tells us everything. We know trolley, when we press the plunger, one trolley is going to go that way, which will work out, and one trolley goes the other way. So that's how we do that problem, just by looking at the momentum gained by trolley Y, and that must be equal to the momentum lost by trolley X. We work out the momentum of trolley X, subtract the momentum that it loses, and that's our new momentum. And therefore, we can equate that to mass times the velocity divided by the mass of trolley X, and we get the velocity of trolley X to be minus 0 0.30 meters per second. Question 3, Part D. The light gates used during the experiment each contain a lamp and a photodiode. A photodiode is a PN junction. A photodiode produces a potential difference when photons of light are incident on it. And we've got to state the name of this effect. Well, if we have a photodiode, that's its symbol for it, because we can see the arrows stand for the light shining on it. And in order for it to produce a potential difference, it must be in what we call photovoltaic mode. Now, notice also that there's no battery across the photodiode. We say that it's unbiased. There's no battery across the terminals. It's the actual action of the photons uh, arriving into the depletion zone that causes a potential difference to be created across the terminals of the photodiode. So it's working in photovoltaic mode. Now, the next part of the question is asking us to explain how that potential difference is created across the terminals of the photovoltaic uh, cell. And we have to look at a simulation for that to happen. So part two, it says light from the lamp is incident on the photodiode using band theory. Explain how a potential difference produced when photons of light are incident on the photodiode. Now this simulation here shows what in fact is happening. You can see that we have a p-type and an n-type and you can see that the valence band and conduction band has a kind of hill between each uh, of the n-type and the p-type. If you're traveling from the n-type to the p-type, there's a kind of hill happening here. Now what exactly is happening can be seen in this little uh, demonstration here and we'll catch it in the next cycle. First of all what we have is a photon comes in and it excites the electron from the valence band up to the conduction band. That's the first thing that happens. The photon excites an electron from the valence band to the conduction band. But as you'll notice the electric field across the depletion layer, that's that hill there, will force the electrons to the n-type material. Electrons tend to flow down the hill. So they'll flow to the the n-type material. And as they do so, they are increasing the negative charge at that part of the junction, as we can see what's happening there. Uh, up to the conduction band, they uh, fall down the hill and they're, into, they're bringing their negative charge with them. Now, the hole that's left behind that does the opposite. That's forced up the hill, and with it, it carries its positive charge. Remember, a hole is something with the absence of an electron, if it's got a positive charge. And that takes its positive charge up to the p-type material, as shown. Now, this process goes on and on and on, uh, and the charges build up. And you can see from this last statement here, as more photons excite more electrons, there's a build-up of opposite charge uh, at the junction edges. And it's this build-up of opposite charge at the junction edges that provides the potential difference across the PN junction. So really, the PN junction is really acting like a solar cell. The action of light on it is producing a voltage across the terminals of the photodiode. So that's the story of it. So to summarise, the photon excites an electron from the valence band to the conduction band. The electric field across the depletion zone will force the electrons to the n-type material, increasing the negative charge at that point. The left behind hole is forced to the p-type material, and this increases the positive charge there. And as more photons excite more electrons, there's a build-up of opposite charge at the junction edges. And it's this that results in a potential difference across the p-n junction. Thank you.